All right, we are coming back after a weekend to continue working on our animation project. We are using Photoshop to do this and its timeline tool, which allows us to animate frame by frame. And that's not the only way we can animate. We can also animate like a video editor, but because we're not using film files, we're using still images we're creating layer by layer, frame by frame is the most direct way to learn. So <clears throat> whether you're using your emoji exercise, whether you're using your creature, the three things that we're going to try to turn in by next class are your rough storyboard sketch, your finished GIF animation, which you can see can be fairly choppy. This is not 24 frames per second unless you're doing a very straightforward animation or making it really fast. And then what's called a refined storyboard. And I'm going to try to get nearly everything done except for the refined storyboard today. Because you can only do that once you've finished your animation. So our progress so far has mostly been deciding what to showcase as a transformation. And we do that through a rough storyboard, nine, nine frames, all square. We're all using a square format that's eight inches by eight inches by 100 pixels per inch. And we move on from there. So unlike our other projects, we've designed this in two files. So I'm going to open up both of these Photoshop files. One is my assets file. And that's what we've done the most work on so far. And that assets file allows us to build the frames we need. So as we build asset by asset, you might organize them into different folders, like I have the, the motion cycle for zooming in that I created for those of you and put on the videos for those of you interested in maybe doing a pan effect at some point, right? This kind of zoom. I have my mosquito flying. And at this point, it's always good to kind of remind yourself where you are in your process, right? It can get disorienting. Then the other Photoshop file we have open, which is right next to it, is called the stage file. So we have the assets and we have the stage. So far I have seven frames. So what happens in those seven frames? Pretty basic. This kind of glowing mosquito comes into frame, flies in front of the moon, then goes up, and then a shadowy image of my creature appears at that step. Right. So that is a flattened full frame. If I wanted to play it as an animation test on the timeline, it would look like this. Yep, so far, so good. Now, before I add any more layers, I need to select all these frames and then drag them to the trash. That is important because there are some automated animation techniques built into Photoshop. One's called a movement tween. And if I add a layer or an element or change a layer while I have a timeline frame outputted, it will move every frame in a way that I can't control. So that's we only output the, the timeline frames when we want to run a test, and then we put them all back in the trash. We don't hit delete because we want to keep our layers. So I'm going to save my work. I know where I am. Save my work. When you open the timeline, this is only on the stage file. You go to Window, Timeline, and then you're going to click on Create Frame Animation. All right. So this was the last layer I set up, or the last frame I set up. So let me see if I have the components I need for the next frame. And if not, I can build them. So my mosquito was flying. The next place it flies is here. So I can turn off the other one, leave that one there. And now I'm going to move my creature no longer in the shadows and make him a little bit bigger. Now to do that, I might duplicate both of these and put them in a group because I like them together like that. And then I can transform the group with our good old composite tool, Command-T. I want to make my life a little bit easier. I can also merge the group into one layer. 
And by doing that, I can do something like edit puppet warp. We talked about this, where we can set joints on our creatures and then move them. Right? So I want this head to kind of reach up. So I've moved the creature a little bit, right, from there to there. And now I want its mouth to open. So to do that, I might need to go back to my hero resource, right, this one. And I might need to do some internal compositing. So to make the mouth open, I'm going to use my lasso and separate the jaw. I could also get it from another resource, like go to Pixabay, find an open crocodile mouth or something. But I'm just going to duplicate that jaw. And now I have that as a resource to add. onto my creature. Well, let's see. The reason I like to have both of them open is I can always just click on the stage and see what the last frame was. And so I think I want to move this creature a little bit more. I need to move it now behind the mosquito, right? Because it's going to be eating the mosquito. I'm going to take both these layers, move them as a group, in this case, behind the mosquito layer. And i got to take, let's see, the jaw. Put it into place. And I'm going to have to play with adjustments a little bit. So I'll duplicate the jaw and then play with image adjustments. Let's take hue saturation and just dim that saturation so it matches a little bit better. Darken it a little bit. There we go. Okay, I can also command T and just warp the jaw. Kind of help it work with the puppet warp. And I think as a nice touch, I'm going to burn the bottom of the creature's mouth. So I have my tablet here. Remember when we use burn tool, we use it with a pressure sensitive brush. So one of these with a soft hardness and an exposure of less than 20. I'm going to burn that inside of the mouth. So it looks like it's open. If I want to, I can even use the sponge tool and saturate, we don't do this much, the inside of the mouth, again with a pressure sensitive soft brush. And I might burn the shadows, which we never do, but this is because subtlety does not play in animation. So I want to make that mouth pretty dark. Uh, not, not actually that dark, because I want it to look a little menacing. I can also dodge. I'm going to do that less than 20. Again, pressure sensitive. And I'm going to just brighten on top of the head. So that, that mouth is pretty crisp. If I feel like it's lost some resolution... Right, based on my hero reference here, see how clean that is, then I can always use some of my tools like sharpen. 
hit this at a strength of less than 20 and just hit the top of that head a little bit more. Now I still want it to feel like it's coming out of the shadows. So I like that its wing is kind of in, in out of uh, a little blurrier. I like that its foot is a little bit stronger here. So let's see if that's a good next frame. So from here to here. That looks good. And that's setting me up for getting to my middle frame in my keyframes. Now there's one thing I don't think I, the head's not reaching enough yet. So I'm going to take both of these. Well, first let's take just the body. And then let's puppet warp it. Try to get that head angled up. So edit puppet warp. And you know what? At this point, make a duplicate of that jaw. And then let's merge these two together. Okay. Make a duplicate of my creature with the dark jaw, too. Okay. So now, merging these two together, I can do puppet warp with the mouth open. So, so much of animation is not destroying your assets as you build, as you animate. And I just need to tilt this head up. Now, if you do it too much, it will look like macaroni. You don't want that. Let's see if that position, yes, now looks like it's reaching. Good, and I'm going to sharpen it just a little bit. The snout. All right, there we go. The other thing I can do is I can make the mosquito glow a little bit more. So I can set its outer glow, and I can make that a little bit more spread out. It's a little bit stronger, right? And I think I might transform it a bit. Just tilt it a little bit. Maybe even warp it. There we go. I like that. I think we'll notice it. Okay. Now, if I'm happy with that next frame, it's going to go right after this one. Then what do I do? I go to my topmost visible layer, which are going to be these rocks in the front. I hold down Option, and I say Layer Merge Visible. Puts it all into one layer at the very top of my assets. I select it all by going to Select All, or I can hit Command A. And then I copy it all by going to Edit, Copy, or Command C. So I like to use these shortcuts. And then I go to my Stage File. I make sure I'm on my top layer. Because when I hit Edit, Paste, which is Command V, it will paste right into the film as the next frame. All right. Then I can hit Command S to save it. And now here is the tricky part where people get kind of screwed up. Because I have this merged frame right here, I want to delete it. Otherwise, I won't be able to see anything I'm doing underneath it. But I don't want to hit delete right away, otherwise it will just empty out the, the layer. So what do I do? Before I hit delete, I have to hit Command D to deselect. And then I can delete the whole layer. And now I can build my next frame. So my next frame, the mosquito, is going to move to its final position. And my creature now, I get to duplicate. I get to puppet warp and maybe just move. Maybe even just make a little bit bigger. Always on a duplicate. Sharpen it up. And then 